Welcome to this video edition of Cindy Sheehan Soapbox. We welcome back Don DeBar. Don is a political activist and alternative media, uh, I don't know, journalist. And yep. he's an engineer for Cindy Sheehan Soapbox. And we're going to be talking about um, uh, matter that is uh, very troubling, very. Uh, it's, it's just very urgent at this moment. So <clears throat> before we get into, hi, Don. Hi, Cindy. <laughs> How are you? I'm great. I'm sure all my listeners, all, all the viewers are very familiar with you. So before we get into like the meat of the matter, yeah. I wrote, I mean, I had a, a Ukrainian born woman on my show yesterday and we talked about Putin and, and Ukraine and Russia and what's really happening. <clears throat> and some people commented, and these are, uh, mind you, these are just comments on on my Substack. There's no like verification that it's, it seems like almost like, like Russia timed this invasion to cover up like an energy crisis that was already going to be happening, right? And so, <coughs> Who knows? Hmm. Who knows if that if that's true or not? Right. But um, we've seen with the sanctions against Russia and European countries refusing to, um, you know, break break those sanctions to actually harm their own citizens is uh, something that we have been seeing, but it seems like this ugly chicken is coming home to roost here in the United States. Can you tell us what is going on with, with energy and energy prices in your part of the world? Yeah. Um, you know, in Europe, they're talking, for example, number one, uh, running out of fuel for the winter so people won't be able to heat their homes. They're already asking people, you know, take fewer showers, perhaps skip them altogether. Um, you know, a variety of things that are, uh, I don't know, things you expect to be able to do in the 21st century. They're asking people to, you know, right. forbearance on it. No one explains really why, except it's to stop Putin from whatever. I don't know what that means, but that's, that's what they're talking about. And here. It's for democracy, Don. Do you have something against democracy? Yeah, yeah. That, that, that's the <laughs> tattoo that was on that guy's back that was with Zelensky yesterday, right there. Right, a democracy tattoo. Right, thing. right. Yeah, that Nazi, Nazi democracy. Yeah. So, uh, yesterday, you know, I mean, we've been hearing all kinds of things that are going to happen. And last year, actually, or this past year, <clears throat> I got a taste of it. <clears throat> excuse me. Right at the right at the beginning of this war, and I have. <clears throat> excuse me for a second. I have Con Edison as an energy supplier for electricity, and I have gas heat, uh, natural gas heat. And uh, I have a house with two apartments, mine and a small rental upstairs. And for both of us, who are both single, uh, we both have multiple computers and things at home a lot. Uh, the energy bill runs about three fifty a month, so it breaks depending. What time of year it is either more or less mixture of uh, electricity and gas mm -hmm. so in the summertime electricity to run air conditioner and with the time gas to run the heat um this past january i had my usual bill for 350 375 or something and in february and the billing went out after the war started on the 24th of february my bill was a thousand dollars for the same thing exactly pretty much uh, in terms of usage that I had had the prior month. Um, there was a huge outcry here when that happened. I, I was amazed I didn't have to organize anything that people were, everybody noticed. And um, the next month it went back to normal and uh, has been there uh, since pretty much. Um, Did Conjob Edison have any explanation for why they were so high that uh, they had nothing. one month? That they just they said, "Oops, sorry," you know, and they fixed it immediately the next month. Everybody paid their extra, you know, Ukraine tax basically. Mm -hmm. But uh, but but then it went back to normal. Well, yesterday I get an email from Con, uh, Con 
Don Job Edison. Uh, and uh, they, they informed me that uh, my electric bill uh, is going to go up 27% this summer, this winter, and my uh, gas bill is going to go up 32%. So in other words, I'm going to have like a, a blended 30% increase uh, over last year. And this is entirely because of U.S. sanctions against Russia. And this is entirely, in other words, a war tax for the war on Ukraine. Only this war tax doesn't go to the government to finance the weapons that they're giving to Ukraine, which instead are also being funded by us. Rather, this war tax goes into the pockets of oil companies who are going to be collecting 30% more in revenue for exactly the same product. So it seems to me like, um, you know, you don't get that many opportunities to organize people around a, a common problem. Everybody needs electricity that lives indoors. Everyone needs heat that lives indoors in the wintertime. Um, and uh, no one can afford a 30% increase in anything since there's no wages going up 30%. I'm on Social Security. My Social Security is going to go up, they're telling us, by a tremendous, I think, 12% or something. You know, it's huge compared to what it usually is. Yeah. So you compensate for this, but I, I can't handle a 30, you know, over, I don't know, by the way, if the basis for them is that $400 bill or that $1,000 bill. So is it going to go up uh, 30% of uh, $400, so it would be another $120, or is it going to go up uh, 30% of $1,000, which is another $300? Wow, I don't have it in either case, and yeah. I'm well off compared to most people my age. Well, and that is on top of the already um, inflationary uh, fuel prices, gasoline to run people's cars. You know, most people have to have cars, and you know, of course, that puts the the price of everything up. You know, everything that has to be delivered by anything that uses full fuel which is like a, almost 100% of everything we buy. That's right. So, yeah, how can, you know, and, and this is so uh, doubly annoying because we see these people who, these shills for empire, you know, like the, the foreign minister of Germany. Did we already talk about her one time? Not really in any depth. We're talking yeah, who, uh, the green. Uh, uh, Baerbach. Yeah, the green foreign minister of Germany, who said that, you know, the number one priority was democracy in Ukraine and, you know, didn't really matter if people of Germany, you know, couldn't afford heat or, you know, electricity for for other essential things. And some, you know, electricity, like you said, electricity in the 21st century isn't a luxury. No kidding. Well, you know, we got our refrigerators, how much food, you know, we got freezers, yeah. you know, t TVs and stuff. That's a luxury. But, yeah. you know, most everything that, that we have to have right now needs this energy. Well, the TVs and stuff, they'll let run because the, that's basically the overseer that we have. The, the propaganda. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, if it's a choice between democracy and heat, it looks like you're going to get zero and you're none of the above. Right. Uh, and, and meanwhile, everybody's bill goes up. You know, you point out that gasoline increase, you know, tax in the, uh, uh, increase in the price of gasoline jacks up everything in the economy because you got to drive the you got fertilizers growing the food, gasoline to drive the stuff to market, all of that. Um, well, you know, also the supermarket needs heat. And electricity. Right. And cold. So does the, you know, the, the farmer. And so yeah. do you, by the way. Mm -hmm. So, again, throughout the economy, <clears throat> Metropolitan New York is looking at a 30% increase, you know, in, in two months from uh, over their energy costs. That's going to be, that's a huge, that's, that's billions of dollars. For what? Well, you know, here in California, we have a situation where, you know, we went for, 10 days with temperatures over 105 degrees. Uh, many of those days, the temperature was over 110 degrees. And we're constantly being told not to use our power because if you use your power, you're going to lose your power. And um, 
And so we didn't want to lose power. So about the only thing we were running was our air conditioner. Right. And of course, the refrigerator that has to stay plugged in and, and stuff like that. You know, no laundry, no charging anything. You yep. know, we all we all charged our portable chargers so right. <laughs> in right. the morning so we could have, you know, uh, we could charge our telephones. And, and see, now everybody has cell phones that need to be charged. Yeah. And we don't have landlines that are actually like plugged into a line. Sure. You know, any landline is is run on your um, cable if you have cable. Right. And another thing. So we're told don't use your power or you'll lose your power. But then we the, he says they say California Newsom that we all have to have uh, zero emission cars by 2035. But during this time period, they were telling people, don't charge your electric cars. Yeah. So how do they think they're going to have enough power <laughs> delivered in a, a, a price that people can, uh, that's affordable? You know, and like you said, all of this is being done not for democracy, but for oil company profits. That's right. That's that's who ends up benefiting. I mean, that's the way you're supposed to test what's going on is to see who benefits. That's who's benefiting. And it doesn't seem to bother anyone. As a matter of fact, it seems to have been engineered. You know, you mentioned that before that it seems like some of these things were engineered. That in particular is the thing that seems to have been engineered. You know, you go back to January 21st, 2021, uh, you know, 2021. That's Biden's first day in office. At that point in time, gasoline prices here in my town were $1.99 a gallon. Mm -hmm. They've been up to $6 uh, in between that time. Now they're around four fifty dollars here. It's, yeah. you know, two and a five twenty-five dollars still. Yeah, okay. <laughs> five twenty-five. And you guys have seen it almost at, and at $10 in some spots in the Bay Area yeah. a month or two ago. It did get up to there, yeah. Well, so, the, and also about this... Um, rising and you said at dollar 99 when biden took office but um every day on twitter i see him say gas prices have gone down for the 60th day in a row or whatever and my response is always why aren't they're going down by fractions of pennies right when they went up by dollars right that's correct and if you're still paying over five dollars a gallon you know, so so it's not five ninety five a gallon. Do you see it? It went up way faster and way higher than it's actually going down. Yeah, I know. And I believe I I also read something in analysis that this is again artificially an artificial price decrease, and after November, back yeah, up. Sure. Yeah. 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 You know. Uh, I mean, they're telling us that there's going to be a crisis this winter for us, you know, in terms of the heat is an absolute necessity, especially, you know, where I am in New York, you know, it goes down sometimes five, 10 below zero. Right. Um, you know, you have no heat, you, you know, you freeze to death. Um, and not only do you freeze to death, you know, your pipes freeze and burst, it ruins your house, all kinds of infrastructure, the same mm -hmm. thing happens to it. I mean, the place could be set back 50 years with a cold snap without a sufficient amount of electricity. In addition to that, um, this is something that we're seeing in uh, Ukraine right now, for example, um, with that uh, with the uh, nuclear power station there. This was one of the one of the. Do you hear that? Threatening. I'm sorry. It, what, one of the things that was threatened there uh, was the fact that the way nuclear power plant works. It actually requires electricity right. to cool down, you know, the the material, the, the radioactive material, and if you don't have that electricity input, I mean, usually it loops off of the generator that's working there, and but if the generator stops working, you have to have external power feed in there, and that's a backup system that's mandated really to to be there. If you don't have that, you can have a runaway reaction. The thing will overheat and you have either China syndrome where the core overheats and drops to the groundwater and then explodes in a radioactive cloud right. or some other catastrophic event. Mm -hmm. um, if we're having uh, power shortages here all of a sudden, you know, we have spent fuel rods, for example, in, in a pool sitting on two faults 
about 15 miles as the crow flies from my house. That's about 35 miles north of Manhattan. Right. Yeah. You know, how many other nuclear power plants they are in a 50 mile radius down in Jersey, probably at least. And I think Connecticut Yankee also. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, th those are. Those are a couple of things off the top of my head I can think of with this world now is built around having, you know, electrical and, and uh, you know, gas supply to, to operate the economy and the games that are being played with it now. They've, they integrated Russia into the world world uh, market for, for oil and gas and all of that. And now they're cutting, trying to cut them out and they clearly haven't made any provision for that. I mean, they, they basically declared war on half of the oil producing countries in the world one at a time before they did this they mm -hmm. got to the point where oh we got to find somebody to give us some oil uh let's go ask venezuela who we've been trying to starve to death for the last 20 years let's go ask iran who we've been trying to starve to death for the last 40 years and saudi arabia who, yeah, saudi arabia, <laughs> who says "Ooh, now we got him <laughs> yeah sorry about that yep so I mean that we're so we're at that. So we're looking at a real catastrophe for the pe catastrophe for the people here this this winter, absent some serious. It, it's not action. a joke, you know. The, it's not a joke. There's a lot of people who rely on um, machines to keep them alive at home. Yeah. You know, and that's more and more and more people yeah. that rely on oxygen and other uh, medical things that rely on electricity. To keep them alive and like you said um the most vulnerable are elderly people who are on a fixed income and you know they they might freeze to death and people might not know for a long time I, you know so meanwhile they send this thing out to everybody in metropolitan new york yesterday and it's and it's like fear not here's eight ways to manage high bills now right Here's what they got one Spread payments out evenly across the year. So, you know, we're going to we're going to increase your payments by 30 percent. But if you try to flatten it across the year, maybe you can make it up in volume somehow or something. So that's the first one. Second, consider a payment agreement. You know, well, unless the payment agreement is don't raise my rate 30 percent, you got the same problem. Right. Check your benefits is the third one. Maybe you can go on welfare. OK, four, go energy efficient. Oh, I'm broke because my my bill's going up 30 percent. Let me buy new appliances. Right. I'm in a position right. to do that. Five, manage your usage. In other words, turn it off. <laughs> Other Six. words, live like a peasant. So the oil company executives can live like kings. That's right. Here's six. Get customized tips. In other words, the knuckleheads that just gave you those first five points want you to come get some more points from them that aren't going to be quite as good as those five or they would be up in the top five. Seven, avoid peak hours. So if if this is the time of day when people need to use their heat, turn yours off. Right. And then yeah. eight, choose your energy supplier. Con Ed doesn't generate energy. Pick out from Pick from a different company. And this is kind of is the cheapest. So what you should do is actually wear a parka and gloves and, uh, uh, you know, a right. wool cap inside yeah, right. and ski pants yeah, right. and, yeah. and heavy boots. <laughs> That's yeah. what you should do. And, you know, the, uh, polygamy. So you can have three or four of your mates like huddled in a, in a bed Eskimo style or something. Yeah. Uh, you know. If we don't do something about this before it before it happens, it's going to be too late. This is the kind of thing that people need to organize around, and it happens in the context. I mean, this is a tax on the on on us for the Ukraine war. Right. The, Russia is we're at war with Russia. The United States government is at war with Russia through proxies. Mm -hmm. The Russians know who it is. The things the the equipment that's killing their their, their people. They're losing some people. The equipment that's bombing some of their cities, because that's what's happening too inside Russian uh, cities, there, there have been some strikes. Um, you know, all of the things that are going on on its border, that they know it's the United States, and and if the United States is spending as much money on the attack on Russia as Russia spends on its own defense in a year. Um, 
there have been some developments now. Uh, there's kind of a cute cat and mouse game that's been going on. Zelensky uh, demands something from the, the U.S. and the EU, or NATO, whatever. Uh, that sounds outrageous. And then uh, the newspapers go to work on, on the population here and, you know, you're being soft on Russia and, you know, all of this stuff. And the next thing you know, they're granting that outrageous thing. The last thing was like the high Mars, like these, you know, medium range missiles that they've been firing in, into Russia over the border. Mm -hmm. Now, what they want is a special and he laid out the, the agreement terms yesterday. Uh, which is uh, Tuesday, the, uh, the 13th, whatever the hell it was. And um, he wants to enter into a special military alliance with the countries of, the, of the NATO and the U.S. While he's at war with Russia, this would be a mutual defense pact, which would in essence be like the same as triggering Article 5 of the NATO treaty. In other words, Okay, you're conducting a war against Russia, and we're giving you the weapons to do it, and intelligence, satellite photography, all of that, and training your people, and giving you a few people too. But it's not us conducting a war against Russia. Now, we're going to sign a treaty with you that says if you're ever at war with anybody, whoever that might be, we're at war with them too. Mm -hmm. We're at that stage. And Russia now, it's not official yet, it's not from the president. And it's not from the head of the parliament and it's not from the head of the military, but the immediately prior president to this uh, last two terms of President Putin, uh, Medvedev, said yesterday, listen, guys, we are very close to this nuclear war scenario. And once it gets there, you, if you push a little further and, and you're starting to, to hit our cities, your cities are going to be on fire, too. And mm -hmm. we have just the matches to do it. Mm -hmm. And these guys are playing with that scenario. And it's, an ins it's insane because there's absolutely no reason for it. None. And, and people are not organizing around that. So what I wanted to talk, talk with you about basically was, I remember when, when you basically convened Camp Casey down at uh, Bush's Ranch down in Crawford, mm -hmm. Texas, and you had people down there gathered and, and, and a, you know, a whole you know, thing for, for a you know, vigil for months and months and months. I think it's time to try to convene something like that. My idea originally was let's do it in Washington, D.C., but given the size of the country, your suggestion was, well, how about multiple gathering spots? But we find maybe four, five, I don't know, whatever, not too di diffuse. Um, start calling people and maybe try to organize. I don't know, you have uh, Workers World and, and uh, Answer and all, you know, all these RCP, all these groups that are against the war, they say, and, you know, uh, uh, UNAC and everybody. But there's no nobody's working on, like, an actual program to try to stop this. Mm -hmm. and you now have a fire being lit under people, literally, because they're going to be freezing, literally, mm -hmm. in within two, three months. And that maybe somebody could, or somebody's could sit down and figure out a way of trying to organize something to get the masses asses in motion um also i think that this is going to uh, make uh, the yellow vest movement in france look you know like a picnic yep. in europe i don't know about about here in the united states it ready in but Prague, in europe and in madrid and barcelona yeah so um, yeah, Europe's not going to lay down quietly for this, um, that's for sure. So um, if people would like to help you organize, <clears throat> how could they get a hold of you? Uh, okay, well, <clears throat> I mean, one way is uh, social media, Facebook and uh, Twitter are the two primary ones that I that have the most contacts. But, you know, assuming that this actually takes off, you can bet that within a minute it's going to be shut down there. Uh, my email address is my name at uh, gmail.com. It's Don Debar, D O N D E B A R, at gmail.com. Um, so if you contact me there, uh, that, that would be uh, probably the most reliable way to do it. Um, and, uh, and, and the same, I mean, if they, whoever, you know, if you're, if you're a member of one of the organizations I just mentioned, or any of the organizations that are, you know, that feel, these you know these issues here 
<clears throat> it's time to push now. Yes. I mean, we yeah. don't have a lot of time left. Right. You know, <clears throat> the, it's the nature of, of this war thing that suddenly there's some catalytic event and boom. Now, you know, there have been incidents before what looked like a, a launch, for example, you know, it ended up being some reflection that fooled the, you know, the surveillance systems or whatever, some renegade person, some broken communication at a crisis uh, moment, for example, at uh, 1962. Mm -hmm. but we almost had a uh, nuclear war, like at least three or four times that we know of, and, mm -hmm. and probably some more that we don't. <clears throat> With the exception of uh, Cuba and, say, the tensions of the early mid-80s, these things happened only in isolation. Now, I remember in February of, uh, I think it was the year 2000, February 15th, where I live is near Indian Point Nuclear Power Plant. We had a blizzard, a really, really bad blizzard. Everything was shut down. And while that happened, while the roads were completely blocked, even for the plows and everything, there was an incident at the nuclear power plant. And everyone became aware of the fact that compounding, you know, the issues around evacuation could make evacuation impossible. And suddenly, instead of having some manageable event and some ruined real estate and a few dozen dead people, you could have like, you know, 10 million dead people or mm -hmm. people. <clears throat> this is like that. We have, you know, military planners in Russia, if, they, if they're not considering the possibility of a fir nuclear first strike by the United States right now, you know, they're negligent. The U.S. is like pushing on their borders, trying poke, trying to take them down economically. They've got a massive propaganda campaign trying to produce an uprising in the country and you know, all of these things. If you're looking at it from the point of view of a, of a military defensive planner, you're looking at the whole you know, uh, range of uh, offensive weapons available to the other side. And obviously, nuclear weapons are one of them. Now, with that mindset, seeing some f flash of light somewhere on some surveillance system might make you that much more trigger happy, mm -hmm. and more likely to push the button. And we're, we're in a pressure cooker as far as all of those conditions go. We're, yeah, we're on the thin edge first, skating on thin ice, that's for yes. sure. So if people want to um, organize something uh, against <clears throat> this uh, urgent issue, I know uh, it takes sometimes people feeling pain. Mm -hmm. And so if they're feeling pain in their, their pocketbooks, you know, maybe that'll help them look a little bit closer at the true. It's not Putin price hikes. That's right. You know, Putin had a very a good speech about why prices are, are high in the United States. It had nothing to do with him. Yeah. And so you can reach Don at his social. And I'll, I'll put all these contacts on this post. Okay, and his email is in the post. All you have to do is respond to this post and you'll get me. Mm -hmm. And um, yes, and and hopefully we can make something happen because yeah, it, it would be bad to freeze to death, but I think it uh, would be worse if uh, billions of people died in a nuclear conflagration. Yeah, and look, we have to set up a table to have this conversation. Um, <clears throat> so that that's we got to figure out where that is. And if you're a member of an organization, bring the organization to the table. You know, speak with the leadership. If, if the leadership's not responsive, speak to the other members of the organization and go back to the leadership with a mm -hmm. group of them and yeah. say, look, we, you know, we've been paying dues in this organization. We've been doing the yeoman's work and everything else. We're facing a nuclear war over here, maybe. It's time for us to chime in on this in a heavy way, not to complain about it, but to stop it. And not to worry about if our if our organizing will jeopardize the chances for the Democrat Party in November. This is the last thing people should be worrying about yeah, right now. Who cares? Yeah, yeah. I, I see people um, people do like little personal uh, you know bio blurbs or whatever in their social media thing. An awful lot of people that that say what what is it that you want more than anything uh, a, a Democratic majority in the Senate. <laughs> like, Really, I don't. <laughs> Chuck Schumer there, all will be well. Yeah. Um, no, I don't Chuck want my, children, my, my grandchildren to be incinerated. Well, and Chuck Schumer is my senator in New York. Con Edison, 
Okay, he worries about them, not me. Right, for sure. So just like PG and PG and E here in California. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, uh, all those. Newsom is more worried about them than he is about. He's not going to be handing you a check to pay your electric bill. That's for sure. But you know, maybe we can win it on a game show, like in the UK. Uh, <laughs> yeah, maybe they'll put so and and also when this is posted. You know, we need to make sure that we share it with organizations that yeah. we know of and that we've worked with before, but also everybody else who watches it shares it with these organizations or, or different organizations that they know. Well, to make sure that people watch it, we should cut it off because we're at 30 minutes right now. Okay, very good. Just let one moment, very last thing, quick. Yeah. Um, the, the price increase in your electric bill is coming. They, this is an announcement that I'm reading from telling me that. Mm -hmm. So. Think about your electric bill in two months and how you're going to pay it. And if you don't have an answer, then help us organize something. And you're not paying for democracy in Ukraine. That you're you're it. lining the pockets of people who are already fabulously wealthy. That's right. Is what you're doing. You're not you're not making sacrifices for anything good. That's right. You're being sacrificed mm -hmm. by the so people who have been sacrificed us. And so is Ukraine, by the way. What what actually yeah. happened in Ukraine is they put actual Nazis in power, and they're in power right now. Right. All right. So thank you, Don. We'll Thanks. get we'll get on this, and we'll get it shared around. Very good. Okay. We have a lot of work ahead of us. Let's go. Okay. Peace.